we respect what is privileged with your client history. But as a general matter, we can read here from what the report says that Trump acknowledged on the tape that he had a classified document. So leaving to the side whether he did or didn't have it, um, that clearly shows his intent, uh, what a prosecutor might call his criminal intent, as a citizen to retain a classified document. Um, that's bad for him, right? Standing by itself, it looks bad, but you have to really match it up with a lot more facts. You know, the tape alone is not something that's sufficient. You have to match it up to an actual document. You know, what was he supposedly waving around? Was there any document there at all? Was this all just bluff? All Unless right, well, let's go can... back and forth, and sure. then I'll let you finish, Tim. But let's yeah. say that, for the sake of argument, he wasn't holding a classified document, but he was expressing his criminal intent to hold one. Uh, I could give you a different example, and I'm not making an aspersion about Donald Trump, but just for viewers to be clear, uh, you could have a drug dealer say, hey, bring me the heroin, um, and they brought him an empty box, but if you found heroin at his home, that's not going to be good for him, right? I mean, what do you say to the fact that this looks like criminal intent, regardless of the document in that room, which, in all fairness, as of this time, we don't know what document was in that room? I don't think that you can uh, form intent from the recording by itself unless you match it up with a document. You know, it's clear from, from the reports about this tape, he was upset about things that Mark Milley had said publicly about him. He was pushing back on that, and he said, you know, essentially, you know, he's lying, I have a document to prove it, but I can't show it to you because it's classified. You know, was that, you know, really a bluff? Was that a real document? Unless they can match it up with the document. When you say, was it a bluff, just to be clear, you're saying you're, sure. your best defense would be that he was lying about the document. Possibly. I mean, really, we would need to take a look at this whole tape in context and, you know, talk to the witnesses, find out what was going on in the room, find out what he was even talking about. Is that something you found that he would... That, uh, is that something you found, that about classified documents or matters of national security, he would just lie to people in the room? It's not something that I ever saw, no. But I never... We... Um, that was not something we really looked into. You know, what we were looking into was the existence of these documents, where they were, where they went, how they got there, and what was, what happened to them. You know, getting into and discussions he had with yep. other people was not... That was outside okay. of my scope. So th those documents, which, again, you were directly involved, which is why it's interesting to hear from you, in returning sure. those documents, uh, many of those documents were returned to the feds, speaking mm -hmm. colloquially, uh, because they were determined to be classified. Um, none of them have come back as unclassified. Is that correct? Uh, well, so I, w I would disagree with that. So there were, there were several sets that were returned in different ways, and none of it was because of a determination of classification. The first okay. set that was returned was 15 boxes uh, that were sent back to the National Archives that contained a whole bunch of documents, uh, the vast majority of which were you know, certainly unclassified, unmarked. A certain subset of those did have classification markings on them. Uh, after that, there was a subpoena uh, to which there were several searches, uh, one before I got involved in the case and several yep. after that I oversaw, where any document that had a classification marking on it was returned. And even if some of those documents were clear from the face that they had been declassified, the fact that they had a classification marking on them at all was something that made them responsive to the subpoena, and therefore we returned them. And then the third category would be the ones when the FBI did the raid on Mar-a-Lago, whatever they took during that. Right. And what they took, they deemed needed to be investigated or classified. If all of that is unclassified, if y'all could prove that, well, you'd have a great defense that they came in and they didn't find anything. But it's, it's the opposite, isn't it? They found materials that they deemed classified, and you guys, back when you were on the team, didn't ever win a single court argument or, or judicial ruling that the key stuff they wanted was not classified. So how do you Nor get— Nor did we have a hearing you know, on that. Right. So how do you, you get... You're, you're, I mean, that you're saying we didn't win a hearing well, me, on I'll, whether they were classified, even though we never had I'm, a hearing. That, that's right, not I'm something saying you that would have happened at this stage. Right. But I'm saying, going forward, if there is an indictment, um, mm -hmm. if this case is not dropped or dismissed, how do, you, how do you beat these kind of accusations? When you have Donald Trump saying in public, I can do it, I did do it, you have this alleged tape where he says, this I'm holding right now is classified, he's speaking as a citizen, not as a president. Um, how do you win this case without 
somehow reversing what is currently the federal government's determination um, that they had to come in with a warrant to take back classified stuff from Donald Trump. Well, so there's several points to that. First of all, classification is not part of this alleged offense. You know, what they are investigating him for, uh, what they are, you know, possibly proposing here is something called willful retention of national defense information. Classification level is not an element of that offense. The, the offense is about national defense information. Classification is just one analyst's opinion as to what level, if at all, something is And just, is I will let you finish, but sure. you're, you're referring to, your basis for that is what? The, the statute cited in the search warrant? Correct. Correct. The statute because that's more of a floor. Form. I think you'd agree, though, legally, that's more of a floor than a ceiling. In other words, that's relevant. I'm glad you're reminding us all of that legal history. But in theory, depending on what they find, they could charge on other things, too. They could. They could potentially. But ultimately, when it comes to you know, prosecutions under Title 18 for private citizens, um, you know, not military members uh, or yep. active government officials, it does go to whether something constitutes national defense information. People have been acquitted before for possessing top secret documents that were overclassified. People have been convicted for possessing unclassified material that did yep. constitute national defense information. So classification, declassification, a lot of it's it's great for, you know, for talking about on the media and everything. And it's you know good for comm strategy. But ultimately, when it comes down well, to Tim, the Tim, you're not accusing me offense, of being it's. Oh, no, no, you're I'm, not accusing I'm not me of being part you. of the media. <laughs> no, I'm just having fun it, with you. It, well, it let is, me say this, because I have a couple of things I want to hit with you. Elements. I understand you're hitting the distinction. And look, someone listening to you, if somebody has only heard uh, what is, I do think, tough evidence against Trump, someone listening to you might think, gosh, maybe this is complicated. Gosh, maybe there are available legal defenses. That's what makes you the lawyer that you are. And yet, uh, you're here tonight in part because you're no longer on this team, and it's been publicly um, uh, uh, reported that there's been these clashes. Boris Epstein, um, who in terms of litigation may have less experience than you, um, was sort of positioned as, as kind of your boss, or you can tell us in your own words what he was. Let's take a look at some of what he said uh, representing Donald Trump. I was part of the process to make sure there were alternate electors. I'm charged with maximizing the president's constituencies. And I've got my hand in a couple other things. Everything that was done was done illegally by the Trump legal team, by according to, to the rules and under the leadership of, of Rudy Giuliani. You know, I've had the honor of being in the room for a good amount of these interviews. I had the honor of being at the White House uh, on election night in 2020, and I spent a lot of time with the mayor. Was he your boss or supervisor? Did you leave because of him? And is he serving the president, the former president's interests? Uh, look, I, I gave an interview a couple of weeks ago where I talked about the, you know, the reasons why I left. Uh, I have certain mm -hmm. reasons why I wanted to discuss that publicly. Uh, but, you know, I, I've, I've said what I've what I've said about Boris. And, uh, you know, at this point, I don't really want to expand on it anymore. Is that I, because I, you're I, appreciate, I appreciate the question. It's just he, here's the thing is that you know, I'm a lawyer. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not a campaign guy. I'm not a political guy. And so my concern is the facts and the law and what happens in a courtroom. And really, you know, the whole narrative about you know, Boris, what his role is, that's more of a political conversation. It's not something that, you know, that I, I really want to, you know. Well, I would push you on that. I mean, you're, yeah, you're, you're going to choose what you say. But uh, there are people who care about the issues here, and if somebody that close to the former president is pushing things that are false or complicating it, that's of public interest, dealing with the documents as well as what happens in the case. Um, I did want to also play another lawyer, but I, I take your answer there, um, who's, who you're familiar with, Joe Tacopino, who's involved in more than one case. Um, he came on this program. We discussed the New York case, um, which now has been charged. The, what you're about to see uh, from Mr. Tacopino was before the indictment, which is about fraud. It's about, to simplify, lying. Um, and in that interview, take a look at what he said. Here's why it's not a lie. Could you did you know paper, about this? Did you did you paper down? Let me, uh, let me answer. Did you know about this? Yeah, no, no, I don't. No, we don't need that. Here's what, why it's not a lie. Yeah because it was a confidential settlement. So if he acknowledged that, he would be violating the confidential settlement. So is it the truth? Of course it's not the truth. Uh, your thoughts this is on why him I saying, wanted of to course, be in the studio with ahead. you. So I, could, I wanted to be in the studio with you instead of remote so I could grab your notes. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, that Go was ahead. an interesting one. Well, do you think he's serving the president well in a case that's now about fraud by saying, of course, they didn't tell the truth? 
Look, uh, Joe Tacopi and I have has a significant history together. You know, I represented Bernie Carrick, uh, who was originally represented by Joe Tacopina, who, um, you know, we litigated a case over the fact that Joe Tacopina then um, became a witness against Mr. Carrick in his criminal case. Uh, and so, you know, do I, I don't want to comment on the things that he's done specifically in this New York case, but uh, obviously we have a history and I am not somebody who would recommend him you know, as a lawyer um, to handle a case like that, uh, nor did mm. I recommend that. So um, the, the decision to bring him on was not mine. But it's Understood. my understanding. Uh, it's my understanding, though, at this point that uh, that Todd Blanche has kind of taken over lead on that case. So I, I would refer you to Todd on that. You think Todd is calling more shots than Mr. Tacopina? That's my understanding. I mean, certainly, if you just look hmm. at the setup on the table at the arraignment, you have you have Todd in the first seat. You have Susan right next to him, and then you know down in the far end of the table where the associates would normally sit is where you have Joe Tacopina and uh, and Boris.